Hello YouTubers, Hammy Tech here. This is Hammy Technoid. And today we are in the green screen man cave. And you can see the green screen goes all the way up and down the side of the rack in here. But today we are focusing on the triamp system that I've got going in here. And the reason it's called a triamp system is because there are three amplifiers, okay? And I'm showing you them right now. And the one on the bottom is the Europower Behringer EP4000. And that one is used to power my base cabinets, okay? And that one is capable of putting out 550 watts per channel into 8 ohms, okay? So if you've got an 8 ohm speaker, you can expect this thing to produce 550 watts RMS power, uh, and that's root mean square, and that's a mathematical equation that figures out how power works. Okay, so these, that bass power amp will really bump your bass, okay? And then the middle one is a Carver, uh, the light is kind of shining on it, it's a Carver M, 0.5T, yeah, I think, yeah, you'll be able to see it. And that one I've got hooked up to my ESS Heil Air Motions, and that one, it powers the tweeters in the system, okay? And then the cube on the top, that is a Carver M400T, and that one is powering the mid-ranges. And I neglected to mention the power capability of the M.0.5T. 0, 0, that one is 200 watts per channel, as well as the Carver 400T. M400T is capable of 200 watts per channel. And th those figures are RMS. Root means square is a mathematical equation. So technically what I've got here is I've got the capability of 900 watts per channel RMS and that is rated at 8 ohms okay and these are the speakers here this is the speaker stack that I put the power into uh, the bottom one is the base cabinet okay it is a 12 inch driver capable of going down to 20 Hertz it has very good driver the mid-range is in the the uh, the horizontal triangular looking um, rectangular I mean rectangular looking box and that houses two domes uh, wired in parallel so that gives that that stack uh, four ohm impedance which draws more power Okay, and then the uh, the top one is the Heil Air Motion Transformer, and that is a tweeter that uh, is rated at uh, about 4 ohms, so it is capable of drawing more power from the amp as well. So that's my speaker stack there, my triamp speaker stack. And the thing about having a triamp system and three amplifiers is I'm going to show you what doesn't go along. What doesn't belong in this thing here? This this thing I'm showing you right here, that is a crossover network. It's a bit of a chewed up one. It's had its parts uh, taken off, but uh, some of the parts. But this is a crossover network. And you know what this is? This is a power hungry sponge. That's what this is. Yeah, it does the job of shifting the frequencies from the, uh, the uh, down here. It's falling out of my hand um, this does the job of taking the power output from your amplifier and shifting it to the woofer the mid-range and the tweeter but in the process it uses up power it is sponging up your power so that 500 watts you think is going to your speakers only maybe 400 watts and a hundred of it is being wasted in this thing okay and I've got another one here this is from a different speaker and you can see that they the kind of you know the kind of quality components that different brands use like this is really low quality crossover network it's made on cardboard and it's just stuck together piece by piece and it looks pretty chintzy you know that's a chintzy looking crossover but with a triamp system like I've got in here there is no power sponge each amplifier is directly connected by wire to its representative speaker so the Behringer is powering the base cabinet, the M400T is powering the rectangle box, and the M0.5T is powering the ESS Heil Motions. 
and you say, how, okay, Hamitech, I got a question. What makes the frequencies go to the different speakers? How do you do that? And that is a very good question. And that is going to be my next topic on my next part of this series, of the Triamp series. And that is, we're looking at now the Triamp crossover network. And these are called active crossovers not passive like I was showing you this is a active crossover and that is very important to know in your triamp system so I'm going to talk about those next time but until then thank you for watching and see you later